What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the third here with chess.com and today we have game of the day with Magnus Carlsen chess tour the finals with the white pieces we have Magnus Carlsen and with the black pieces we have Hikaru Nakamura. Let's get right into it guys. It was very very exciting. D4, knight of 6, c4, e6. Knight to c3 and bishop b4 guys. We have a Nimzo Indian, very dynamic stuff, very fun to play, ultra modern. It's like nice stuff to play. Bishop to b4, e3. And then after e3, we have castles, and this e3 move is uh, very flexible. You do have moves like bishop to d3, of course, even 92 before bishop to d3, but Magnus chose bishop to d3 here. And then c5 from Nakamura here, just attacking the center as you should. Of course, you should fight for the center, Russian chess school style, fighting for the center. You need to fight. So, of course, we put pawns in the center here, and this is just very common, very common way to play here in the Nimzo Indian is playing c5 and d5 and b6 and even taking and sometimes bishop to e7 or rook e8 and putting the bishop on f8. Many ideas here, guys, and that's what makes this such a rich opening here. After knight to e2, there's d5. Now, of course, keeping some tension in the center here. White shouldn't probably capture any of the pawns here. The reason being is because you want to keep the tension, and sometimes to take is a mistake. It just depends on what's going on and who is who is it better for when you capture that. So after d5, a3 for Magnus here, kicking the bishop and questioning, are you going to back up or are you just going to take the, the, the knight here? Which he actually should. Bishop takes c3 and instead of taking with our knight here, which seems like the move, it's actually pawn takes. B takes c3, which keeps our center nice and strong here. A development move. We also have an open file for our rook. Generally, just a great move. After D takes C4, which is a tempo, because we do have to take this back to keep material even. And uh, now, after Bishop takes C4, Queen to C7 from Nakamura here, attacking the Bishop. Loose pieces, lose games. And this means that this piece is undefended. So you want to do something about it by either means of de defense, by defending it, Queen D3 or Queen B3, or just getting it out of the way. And that's what he chose here. Bishop A2, get out of the way here. Then we have B6 here by Nakamura, threatening Bishop A6 or Bishop to B7. Both both of these moves have intention here. After castles, there's bishop a6. Just to put some uh, pressure on the diagonal here. Bishop to b2 from Magnus and then knight to c6, guys. We have to develop our pieces no matter what opening you're playing. You are always have to, you, you always have to develop your pieces. The ideas may be different, meaning like this may be a king side attack, this may be a queen side attack, we may fight for the center, we may sack and exchange. Those are different ideas, but the the main sense and core of chess here actually is developing your pieces, guys. You gotta develop your pieces and get your guys off the back rank. So knight to c6 just makes total sense just to develop. Rook to c1. This is a piece we haven't moved yet. Put it on a file here, x-raying the queen, and rook a to c8. Just uh, matching, matching you, and I will move my queen. And after c4 here, which is very interesting, guys. c4 is a very interesting move here. He's saying, hey, instead of having a pawn on b2, I want to have a bishop on b2. And so he plays c4 to open this lineup, not to mention the bishop does a great job of controlling or having some influence on the d5 square. Now, after uh, uh, c4, there's c takes d4, capturing the pawn. Followed by E takes D4. Now we have two pawns in the center here. We're uh, kind of off center for this one, but this one looks pretty nice. And now we have mobile pawns. And this could be a problem for Black if he doesn't answer this correctly. Black plays Queen to E7 here, defending the knight. And of course, just watching out, you know, because this is going to happen. There was no way to stop D5 anyway. And instead of being on this, why would I be here? And D5, I would rather be on Queen E Queen E7 on this file here, which there's nothing going on. I'm kind of eyeing the a3 pawn if the bishop moves, but also I'm just defending the f6 knight. And that's the biggest thing here, especially after a move like d5, which was played here, guys. And now this is about to get crazy. d5 happens. E takes d5. And instead of just taking back immediately, he actually played rook e1, which, of course, is the best move here, guys. Taking back immediately is a fatal error due to bishop takes e2. So just so you guys know, just take the pawn. Bishop takes e2. Oh, it just loses. Not a good move, right? Not a move. Rook e1. Is just better. Knight f4, knight g3 are the intentions here. And then maybe going into f5 and using the pieces we have here. Bishop takes c4, so sacrificing the pawn here. We've sacrificed it. And now, um, now here comes the trouble. Knight to g3, knight to g3 attacking the queen. We can also get our pawn back whenever we like here. f6 is hanging here. Guys, this is amazing. I mean, look at the pawn sacrifice for initiative here, guys. Initiative. And when you do things like this, when you sacrifice something for initiative and development, the pieces need to be harmonious. They need to be pointing in the right direction. They need to be working together for the common cause. And here, this bishop is doing great. This rook is doing something here. This bishop may be doing something here. We may have some, some fun over here. Let's see what happens. Queen to d8. 
and the world champion plays bishop to b1 here now these bishops i mean guys how, oh my goodness what do you think is going to happen here i don't know actually i do but this the, you you are definitely frightened here you are definitely frightened here with the black pieces i mean just flip the board guys and you can feel the uncomfortable pressure from these lasers on this side of the board just beaming down on the position at a moment's notice something could happen and everything could go wrong b5 from nakamura here just playing b5 being very solid here and maybe even queen a5 let's just see what happens but we, we, we maybe not queen a5 but you, you have to be very careful here b5 is on the board and after b5 we have knight f5 now here we go guys knight f5 is here what happens next is d4 and then queen to d2 we could have taken this but he actually just wanted to open his bishop up a little bit just to play bishop d5 or like even bishop to e6 but the queen's on d2 he actually blocked his bishop too as well and i'd be happy to trade oh, hey i will give you your pawn back says black i will give it back to you for one of these awesome pieces you have on the board black goes back to bishop e6 to attack this knight and then rook c5 what a move here not only rook lifting, defending the knight, and actually it was already defended, but putting extra defense on the knight. Also maybe moving the knight and rook lifting to g5, or even just putting a rook on g5. And also doubling on the file, guys. What a multi-purpose move. I mean, beautiful. Rook to c5, and then a6. And now, pause the video. What would you play in this position? White to move. Magnus looked at the board, put his hand on his mouse, and played knight takes g7 and stared at the screen. He didn't actually stare at the screen, but knight takes g7 is on the board, guys. Oh my goodness, knight takes g7 is here. Can you believe it? Watch this. Here it goes. King takes g7. He has to take it, basically. Oh, the cover is lifted from the king here. Queen to g5. Usually this would work a lot better, too, if the queen was not here. But, of course, we do have some intention here, and watch what happens next. After king to h8. Queen h4, we are eyeing this pawn. We are now actually threatening things like rook takes c6, bishop takes d4, and taking on f6 here. Lots of scary moves here. Now, the defense to this position was supposed to be rook to e8 with intentions of, after sacrificing, there was stuff like bishop f5, which was very weird because of back rank issues that white had. Interesting, very interesting, and it takes, I mean, Hikaru was had difficulties trying to find this, guys. So... It was a very difficult way to play this, and he actually chose rook to g8 here, which actually loses. Let's see what happens. Rook takes c6, rook takes c6, bishop takes d4. This knight is now hanging. We are sacrificing everything to get to this king. Now, king to g7 is on the board. Queen takes h7, but you also have queen to g5 in some cases. Most people will play this, but this one is indeed better. Queen takes h7, king to f8, queen h6, attacking the knight. And if king e7, of course, bishop takes, fatal error. King to e8, and bishop takes f6, and there it is. There it is. Okay, queen to a5, attacking the rook. You have to keep the, the attack up. And then we just bring the queen back to civilization here to defend, and also maybe just eyeing some other squares here. Just centralizing the queen. There's nothing wrong with that. Queen to b6 happens. After queen to b6, we have rook to d1. Um, a threatening mate, by the way, guys. If queen takes e3, there's mate on the back rank. And then rook to d6 here. And I remember uh, even Magnus saying in the post-game analysis from here, he was saying that... Uh, he, he just reset. He had to reset here. And he fell for the oldest trick in the book is what he says. When uh, Hikaru shook his head after playing queen to b6, he played rook to d1 and he kind of tricked him and said, huh, I'm OK. I was just tricking you. I was shaking my head, but I'm actually OK here. And he said he had Magnus said that he had to reset here. So he used it. He used it to his, his advantage. It was pretty fun. It's pretty funny to see that, actually. But bishop to d4 to uh, attacking the queen. Queen to c6. And then look at these bishops still doing damage here. He did bishop b4 to defend the mate on g2. And after queen to c4, guys, h3 is on the board just to make some love for the king here. And also a weighty move just to see what happens. Like, he doesn't have many moves here that could be that good, honestly. So he just plays h3 just to figure out what's going on. What, is, what are we doing here? What is black's next move? What are you actually going to do? And after h3, black plays king to d7. And then we just solidify the rook, make it a little bit better because it is weak here. It's just weak. Just put the rook on d2. What happens next? Maybe we can shuffle a little bit. We'll see what happens. But white is definitely the favor here in this position. Rook to e8. And then king h2, still, again, we're just waiting. Like, what, what's going on? What are you actually trying to do here? Bishop to d5. We were anticipating something like this, says Magnus. Bishop f5, check. Okay, we have to respond to the check. He goes back. Bishop e6. Bishop to d3, beautiful move here. This bishop is actually hanging. Or is it? If queen takes d4, hopefully you had your tactics today for breakfast. Bishop takes b5 with check, and rook takes the queen. GG, have a nice day. And then queen a4. Is uh is the next move. 
which of course just maybe a move like honestly we really don't know what we're trying to do here maybe queen takes a3 but then that runs into bishop c5 i mean you you have to make a move anyway so queen to a4 is just on the board trying to find the best place for the queen very hard in these kind of positions and then after bishop to e5 hitting the rook the best move or one of the best moves was actually moving the bishop to one of these squares but they actually play rook to d5 and after rook to d5 guys what would you play in this position? Game's over. Why to move? Three seconds. Can you find it? The move here. Queen a7 resigns. He Hikaru resigns in this position. Queen a7. He blundered away a checkmate. Because after king to d8, queen to c7, checkmate. And the game is officially over. Hikaru Nakamura goes down to Magnus Carlsen in this game. Very wild game. Very strong stuff, guys. An attacking display here of, of course, rook lifting, sacking on g7, and using all of our pieces to conduct a decisive kingside attack, guys. This was Game of the Day. I'm National Master James Canty III with Chess.com, and I'll see you guys on the next video.